that I welcome to the stage one of the co-founders of Defeat Autism Now, Dr. Sydney Baker. Good morning. Thanks. Um, so, the, the famous uh, psychologist and psych, uh, pediatrician and psychoanalyst D.W. Winnicott urged us in, in, before each, seeing each patient to open our minds, to empty our minds, to have uh, without uh, preconceptions and be um, open to uh, the conversation that occurs with the patient. And um, it's very easy for me to have a blank mind because I just learned yesterday my, my uh, methionine sulfate Self, my, 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 my thionine sulfate enzyme uh, cap is gone at age 70, right? <laughs> so that's why I have a blank mind this morning. And I urge you to sort of be ready for uh, uh, a little bit of a flood from me about uh, some ideas that I've been incubating for a while, at least the last two years. So here's a diagram of uh, the parents of the kids in the autism spectrum. That represents a certain group of us in this room. And here's a group, another group in the room who are medical professionals. As you can see, there's an overlap between the two that constitutes medical professional parents. That kind of diagramming was made by uh, one of the world's famous, most prominent mathematicians, Reverend John Fenn, um, who um, created a system for make what's called set theory, which helps us uh, compare the, um, the contents of different bodies of information, of numbers, of uh, ideas, and uh, of people, and, and data. So what we hope is that what I wish to say will overlap uh, somewhat with what you want to hear. However, this is a keynote speech, which means I get to say whatever I want. <laughs> and you have to listen to it. And I'm going to say a lot more than you can really digest in this talk. So I have a reading list. This is sort of graduate school here. And so it's a reading list of things that you must read, which means you must buy them. That means you too, Paul. <laughs> yes. so, so as you know, the, the, the Bible here is the, the, the book that John and I have been writing uh, continuously for the last 10 years. And then there's another new one I think you should know about, which is the book that Judy Chinitz and I wrote, uh, which is called We Band of Mothers. And that's what this uh, organization is all about, is this is a band of mothers. This is not a group of professionals telling you what to do. This is a group of professionals telling you what you told us. In addition to that, in the, in the uh, syllabus on the page where my slides and, and stuff, yeah, what page is that anyway? 188. 188. Following my slides is an article that I wrote and published recently in the journal called Integrative Medicine, of which I'm an associate editor, so it's easy to get published there. Uh, <laughs> it's called The Oceanic Disease. So if you want some, some more depth in what I'm going to say quite quickly this morning, that's where you find it. And then after that is an outline about metagenesis, which is where I will uh, finish, which is about listening. It's about how we can listen to one another in a more uh, technologically competent way to get the full story of the individuality which is at the bottom of the mystery that we encounter when we get together to have what we hope is a leisurely, intelligent conversation between the physician, the parent, the child to find solutions to the child's individual problem. As a keynote speech, it has a, a complicated title, The Oceanic Disease, I'll tell you more in a second, and individuality, individuality in a systemic epidemic is the subtitle. Key is a word with a, a variety of, of meanings. And uh, for me, it means uh, really, I hope to set a tone uh, that is already in the meeting. It's not, I'm not establishing a tone as some keynote speeches are at the beginning, but I'm trying to capture the tone that we've all established in this meeting and provide a key to a view of the landscape that's maybe at a little bit higher perspective. We've been at the ground level of looking at biochemistry and all the things that are dealing with our children. And now I'd like to say a few things about what I think our children are trying to tell us 
with this epidemic in which they are such, uh, such an important part of the messages we're getting in our culture about what's going on. And it's a message about the decisive organization of narrative. Two snowflakes may be, may be exactly alike, but they have a different narrative. And it's the narrative that helps us define individuality and listen to the story that our children are telling us about what's wrong and listen to the story that our children are about what's wrong, not just in them, but in our culture, in the world in which we live. That's where the metaphor of oceanic disease comes from. So oceanic disease is a metaphor that I'm offering to you for understanding the common ground of all chronic illnesses that we encounter in our modern Western industrialized society. Individuality is the key to this whole uh, conversation, and it has to do, uh, it, it is the fundamental principle of biology. It is the fundamental principle of biology. When we say biomedical medicine, John the other day said, well, we don't know where, how biomedical got attached to what we're doing. It's true. I don't know how, where that word came from, that that's what we're doing. But the definition, it, definition of it has a lot to do with the focus on the individual as a living thing that is both, indi both indivisible and unique. But individuality is the mechanism for adaptation. That's what, what nature gives us to provide our species with a chance to keep finding its way in the world by keep making new mod models. And that's the same thing that's done with bacteria and parasites and funguses and all kinds of other creatures on Earth. They keep trying different solutions to the problem of the environment to see what can be done. The environment is offering us some very strong incentives to change and we're not keeping up with it. Systemic means everything is connected to everything else and epidemic means lots of people have the same thing. But we have to be careful with the word thing. This is not a thing. It's a concept we form about groups of people and so we'll come back to that in a moment. Speaking of language, here is the word key uh, portrayed among all of its neighbors in the lexical um, environment in which it lives. And I'd like you to keep that sense of the proximity analysis alive until we reach the end of the talk when I'll come back to it. The metaphor is a metaphor of a landscape in which researchers set out to find the fundamental causes of, say, heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's disease, autoimmune disease, and things like that, some which Kenny talked about yesterday, and, and, uh, and to see what is the common, what is really at the deep level. These are people in, this, my, in my talk this morning who have been funded by NIH at high levels for many years, are serious academic scientists, and, but they are not the ones who are looking up at the sky for genetic causes or looking for drugs but there are people looking at the fundamental mechanisms of what's going on behind these chronic illnesses. And here are uh, three of the uh, researchers here about to set off through a landscape of modern chronic illness and to find if they can see what are the underlying causes. Now they follow different paths through this landscape, but they're all going to arrive, as it turns out in my metaphor, at the same overlook, looking over the ocean to see what are the common factors. The people, the kinds of people that I'm, just as a sample of the kinds of people I'm talking about, are like Caldwell Esselstyn, S. E. Esselstyn, a, a Yale graduate, <laughs> and uh, a captain of the Yale crew that won the Olympics, a chief of cardiovascular surgery at the Cleveland Clinic, uh, a, a, a prominent uh, top of Mount Olympus uh, kind of person in our culture, who um, worked with a group of patients who uh, I'll tell you about more in a few minutes. And, wrote a, a book about it. His, his work was based on the work of Colin Campbell, the leading uh, expert in the relationship between the environment and health, who published the, probably the single most uh, important treatise on that subject ever to be uh, published. And here's Paul Talalay at, at uh, Johns Hopkins University with a little bundle of broccoli sprouts, the little sprouts that form when you're about to build a broccoli plant. And um, his broccoli sprouts, an exceptionally rich source of inducers, inducers of enzymes that protect against chemical carcinogens, is part of his team's work in discovering some fundamental issues in, in chronic illness, in particularly in, can, 